Hi, this is a tutorial on how to make a fusion reactor for mechanism in Minecraft 1.12.2. This tutorial will assume you already know how to use a metallurgic infuser and osmium compressor, as well as assume you already have some form of power generation. I will not be using anything outside of mechanism in this tutorial. The fusion reactor can either be air-cooled or water-cooled with the former being for raw power generation and the latter for power generation via steam turbines. I'll be covering how to make and use an air-cooled fusion reactor. The fusion reactor requires three fuels, deuterium, tritium, and DT fuel. Let's start on making deuterium. To get deuterium, you'll first need heavy water. To get heavy water, you use an electric pump. Electric pumps pull fluids from below, output it to the top, and receive power from the direction they're facing. You get heavy water from electric pumps by applying a filter upgrade to it. It will then pump out heavy water slowly at a rate of 10 millibuckets per second. Heavy water is turned into deuterium with an electrolytic separator. Here, I already have four filter pumps set up. Because heavy water is produced so slowly, it's a good idea to run four at the same time so that the electrolytic separator continually produces deuterium. The electrolytic separator will turn the heavy water into deuterium and oxygen, which are gases and require pressurized pipes instead of mechanical pipes. You can set the excess oxygen to just be dumped into the environment by pressing this button in the GUI. Tritium is a bit trickier, as it involves processing lithium, which requires a whole process itself. To get lithium, you first need brine, which you get by creating a thermal evaporation plant. The thermal evaporation plant is a multi-block structure made with thermal evaporation blocks, thermal evaporation valves, and a thermal evaporation controller. It is a 4x4 solid base, with the upper layers being a ring with the center 2x2 empty. The rings above the base can be anywhere from 1 to 16 blocks tall. The height determines how much water can be held, with each layer being able to hold 64 buckets of water. The controller can't be on a corner, but otherwise can go anywhere, and the evaporation valves can go anywhere as well. Traditionally, the thermal evaporation plant is heated with advanced solar generators placed on the top ring's corners. However, if you don't want the heat generated to be dependent on the biome or sunlight, you can reuse a resistive heater. The resistive heater generates heat by consuming energy. You can pipe this heat into an evaporation valve with thermodynamic conductors. Once everything is in place, all you have to do is pipe in water to another evaporation valve and the plant will begin to make brine. The higher the heat, the faster the production, so to maximize heating, you're going to want to use more than one resistive heater. To pipe the brine out, place a mechanical pipe on another valve and use a configurator to set the pipe to pull by shift right clicking it. With brine, you can get liquid lithium by piping it into another thermal evaporation plant. The brine will be converted into liquid lithium, which can be pulled out from a valve. Once you've done that, you're going to want to pump the liquid lithium into a rotary condensator. The rotary condensator accepts liquids on the right and gases on the left. To get lithium, you must click the toggle button in the GUI of the rotary condensator and set it to decondensating. Finally, you use pressurized tubes to pipe it into the bottom of a solar neutron activator, and it turns the lithium into tritium. Unlike with a thermal evaporation plant, there's no getting around the solar requirement for this. Thankfully, all DT fuel requires is combining deuterium and tritium in a chemical infuser. You're going to need the DT fuel to be in a hall room, so craft those and place them in the center slot of the chemical infuser to fill with DT fuel. With that out of the way, let's actually build the thing. The fusion reactor is made out of reactor casings and optionally reactor glass. To start, build a star like so. 
then a square without corners, then a full square. This is an important layer as this is where the laser matrix goes. The laser matrix must be on a center block. Once you've done that, you can just mirror what you did for the first two layers with a layer that's a square with corners missing, then a star again. This time, however, you have to put the reactor controller on the center top block of the star. Don't forget your ports, as this is how you input the deuterium and tritium as well as output the energy generated. They can be placed anywhere that's not a corner of a layer. As I mentioned before, you can use reactor glass instead of casings, and they follow the same rule as the ports in that you can place them anywhere that isn't a corner. Now that the reactor has been made, let's take a look at the controller GUI. The first tab you open will let you know whether or not the reactor was made properly. If it was, it will say formed, otherwise it will say incomplete. The slot in the center is where you will put the DT fuel filled holorum. The heat tab shows the current temperature of the plasma inside and the case as well as the energy storage on the top right. The two bottom right storage indicators aren't going to be relevant in this tutorial as they are about mechanism turbines. The next tab is the fuel tab and it is very important as it allows you to control the injection rate. Click on the black box by edit rate and put in either 2 or any even number higher up to 98. Failure to set the injection rate to at least 2 will make the reactor impossible to start. We know this because of the next tab. The statistics tab shows vital information about the fusion reactor. As mentioned before, we only need to care about the top set of statistics as the water cooled statistics is for turbines. The higher the fuel injection rate, the higher the max temperatures and passive generation goes. All that being said, the fusion reactor doesn't actually start on its own when fueled. It needs a jump start with lasers. Setting up these lasers is a pain, so I'm just going to explain it rather than rebuild it. Lasers shoot out a laser when supplied power. This laser is very hot and very dangerous. What we want to do is gather the heat from the lasers and shoot it out in one big burst. To do this, we build laser arrays using laser amplifiers. Laser amplifiers will combine the laser energy of the five different sides it's receiving and push it out as one big laser. In order to generate laser energy relatively quickly, you may want to build large arrays such as this one and daisy chain laser amplifiers. Since we need a laser to shoot as one large burst of energy, we're going to need to configure things on the laser amplifier GUI. The delay lets you put the laser release on a timer. The minimum charge sets how much energy needs to be accumulated before the laser shoots off, and the max is how much you can hold, which is set to the actual max by default. Then there's the usual redstone control and the redstone output setting. You could use this to create redstone wiring that prevents the waste of energy, which I've sort of dummied up here with it. You need to fire the laser to start the reactor, not run it, so it would be wise to set the redstone control to high and just put a button on it to jump start the reactor when necessary. The reactor listed an ignition temperature. I don't know what the actual calculation is, but from what I can tell, 2 gigajoules will get the reactor plenty hot. Once you've got your injection rate set, holorum set, and fuels hooked up, fire the laser. You know it's successful when you can see the colorful spinning cubes inside the reactor. Just a side note, if you're absolutely insane and somehow producing a near infinite amount of DT fuel, you can pump that directly into a reactor port and make your reactor generate a ludicrous amount of energy. However, it's just not sustainable and DT fuel is best used as a catalyst. So that's all for air-cooled fusion reactors. Thanks for watching.